No, God has given you things. God has equipped you with things. God has Hey guys, it's Crystal O, and today I'm going to be doing a get ready with me and a chit chat about comparison. I think this topic is so important because we all experience comparison, okay? Don't lie, don't lie, YouTube. My hope by this video is to encourage you and to also encourage me in the process as well. Honestly, um, I felt very encouraged this morning when I found myself kind of like comparing and kind of just wanting to stay in bed all day and not be productive, but not today, Satan. We're going to get productive. And I'm also going to use that strength to encourage others. So um, I'm going to try to do this correctly, guys. My makeup and talk at the same time. Um, hopefully, I get it right. But yeah, let's see how this goes. All right, so I'm going to start off with my Cover It FX Primer. Um, I really like it because it also has salicylic acid in it, which helps with acne, which I have. I don't know what's going on with my skin in this season, but Lord, take it away, please. So I'm just going to rub that everywhere and start talking. Um, so yeah, so honestly, with the topic of comparison, we've all heard about how, you know, comparison is the thief of joy and don't compare, get to work and all this stuff, but it really is challenging at times. It really is hard to not compare when you see so much happening on the internet um, and you just kind of are scrolling through or maybe you just kind of see where you are and you're like, man, I'm not where I'm supposed to be in life right now and this is not comfortable for me. Like, this is just not, you know, a comfortable place for me. So-and-so is doing this, so-and-so has that, so-and-so looks like they're happy and, you know, I wish I could kind of be there, <laughs> you know, where that person is. Like, can I live where you live? Like, ooh, <laughs> you know, so... Um, I feel like it can become almost a trap if we're not careful. I do feel like, you know, God has given us specific giftings and, you know, specific things that he wants us to do with our lives. And if we're so busy, so busy, so busy, I'm going to say one more time, ooh, I hate how water comes out of these stupid LA girl they're not stupid, but I hate how water comes out of them. Okay. <sighs> Anyways, um, it's still coming out. Oh my gosh. Oh Lord, please send help. Okay, so I hate how, you know, we can become so busy looking at other people's lives that we kind of forget to tend to ours. And I feel like, honestly, you know, with the whole idea of like comparison and stuff, in some cases, I feel like comparison can be healthy. I'm going to give you guys like a little, you know, example of that in a second. Like, you know, when comparison can be healthy, you know, like just how it could actually benefit our lives sometimes, sometimes. But um, comparison can be actually healthy in the event that it's causing you to grow as a person and it's causing you to... Um, be inspired and to strive for more and to reflect and say, wow, okay, maybe I'm not getting this right. Like, okay, maybe this person has this great Christian walk. I can actually glean from this person and learn a little bit, okay? So all comparison isn't like evil. Like, you know, it's not all evil and we don't need to feel like we just should never compare because sometimes comparison opens our eyes to what we're doing wrong and what we can um, do better. So yeah, that's my little tidbit on how, you know, healthy comparison is actually a thing and can actually benefit us as people. But back to the purpose of this video, comparison that is not healthy is probably comparison that makes you feel lesser than it discourages you of anything. Um, and also it kind of becomes obsessive. Like I have to do this a certain way. I have to do this like X, Y, Z, fill in the blank of the person you might be comparing yourself to. Um, and that kind of comparison, my friend, is not what the Lord wants for us because in those moments of comparing ourselves to other people, we are literally taking our eyes off of what God is calling us to do and using our time, our energy, our mental capacity, our emotional capacity, all of the above to put towards what someone else is doing and neglecting what God has put before us. <sighs> oh, 
I know it's a tough cookie to swallow. I know. It really is. And it's kind of like, you know, in those moments, it's like God is like, man, I have given you, I've given you what you need. You know, like you, <laughs> you lack nothing. And I just want your obedience. You know, like we out here thinking that, you know, people just end up where they are overnight because they just do. But what we don't see is the behind the scenes. What we don't see is, you know, um, the hardships that they go through um, when attaining or trying to achieve what they've achieved. So I think it's really important that as believers, we are taking what we see on social media with a grain of salt. Do y'all know how little a grain of salt is? You know, I know you know. <laughs> I know you know. So we have to take it with a grain of salt. Yeah? Okay? We just do. And do you know why we just do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. We do because you don't know the whole story. You do not know someone's life based off of just social media. Unless you're like doing life with that person er day, okay? You don't really know what they're going through. You don't really know what they're facing. You don't really know the hardships that they are going through or honestly the hardships that they went through to get where they are. So the best thing for us people who are striving for more and to grow and to just, you know, flourish in whatever season we're in is to focus on what we're doing. Focus on your own field, focus on your own grass, Focus on your own, you know, plot of land, okay? I also feel like, you know, we kind of see God as like, okay, God, like, give me like this huge amount of what I want and give it to me now. Like, he's like kind of like a microwave, you know? Um, we live in a microwave society where, or generation, I don't even know, society, generation, all of the above. We live in a microwave society where it's kind of like, okay, God, we want it quick, you know? Like, what do we want? Fill in the blank. When do we want it? Now, okay? And that's just not how God works. God is a loving father. He's not going to give you what he knows you're not ready for. He's not going to give you what he knows will not build you up. And he's not going to give you what's going to destroy you. So if you're busy sitting here griping and groaning over what you don't have, that's not showing God or showing honestly yourself um, that you're in a position to receive more. You're not even stewarding, you know, what God has given you. And it's like, if you can't be faithful, this is actually scripture. If you can't be faithful with little, why, why would you ask God for more? You know, if God can't even trust you with little things, you over here asking for too much, you know? So really what has to happen is that we have to get to a place where we are, you know, content with what we have and are willing to do the hard work and steward exactly what we have in that season well. Mm-hmm. Yep, I said it. You have to do it well. You can't slack off on it. You have to actually treat it like treasure because it is treasure to you in that season. It is treasure for you in that season. And, you know, we're not striving to, like, gain more from God because at the end of the day, God really does have to be enough in our lives. We're not going to pursue this, like, okay, I'm going to steward it well so God can give me more. Like, that's not, the like, the whole idea of it. The whole idea is, like, okay, I want God ultimately, right? But <laughs> I can't be sitting here wanting more and not stewarding what God has already, you know, given me. I can't be sitting here wanting more and not taking care of what God has given me, and I can't be sitting here wanting more and slacking off on what God has given me. Like, that's just not, you know, the equation, sis, or bro, you know, whoever's watching this video. But, um, yeah, I'm gonna just pause real quick because these eyebrows is real delicate, you know, they is not, you know, sisters or whatever, but they're cousins, so they have to resemble a little bit. So I'm gonna play a little bit of music in the background while I do this real quick, um, and I'll be right back. And I'm back. So going back to what I was saying was basically that we can't be sitting here, you know, expecting all of this, 
and I'm back. So what I was saying previously was basically that we can't be sitting on our behinds and expect for things to just happen. You know, like God has given us skills. God has given us all gifts, literally all of us gifts. So don't sit here and say, I don't, I'm not good at anything. Like nothing works for me. Like it's, you know, no, that's not true. That's not true at all. God has given us all giftings and we just have to be good stewards of the gift and also you maybe even be good stewards of figuring out what that gift is trying new things putting yourselves in uncomfortable positions to learn more about yourself growing in self-awareness asking questions of those around you hey what do you think you know i'm good at you know like of course this is a trusted person you know you're not gonna ask your enemy like what do you think i'm good at like nothing they will be discouraged so you know you're gonna want to ask someone that you know actually knows you and has walked with you for a while um personally for me i learned that i was like good at public speaking and other types of things um just by others telling me like i remember being in grad school and one of my um one of my professors was like you know you are so good at um teaching yeah, I was like, what? What do you mean I'm good at teaching? That's not who I am. Like, I don't, I don't like to teach like that. Like, that's not, I'm not a teacher. I don't want to become a teacher. Like, teachers are great. Like, much respect to all the teachers around the world. But that's just not who I see myself to be one day, miss. And she was like, no, like, to be teacher oriented doesn't mean you have to become a teacher. And I guess that's what kind of how, like, you know, what I thought about it. Like, oh, okay. Like, so I don't have to, like, go into teaching, like, as a teacher, like a second grade teacher. Because that just isn't my calling, you know? Just being really honest, you know? It really is, I feel like teaching really is a calling. <laughs> like, if you are a teacher, you know, you know, you know, okay? So, um, yeah, so just being around others who can see those gifts in you and seeing, being around others who can kind of just bring them out and, you know, encourage you in them is like really really important it's really important for your growth it's really important for you to also take upon the responsibility of discovering you know those gifts those talents and those things that you want to grow in so when you find yourself trying to compare honestly y'all try to refix your mind on what's really important try to remind yourself that okay look I'm not going to get anywhere by sitting here comparing myself to this person. I'm not. I'm just not. Like, you're not going to get nowhere, okay? So don't even find yourself going down that, you know, bunny trail or, you know, slippery slope. Whatever you call it, okay? Don't find yourself doing that because once you get to that place, it's a little harder to crawl out of, you know? And that's why I'm hoping that videos like this will help you crawl out of that hole, okay? So today, if you're feeling discouraged, if you're feeling like you are just not where you want to be, which, you know, is pretty normal. We kind of all, you know, grieve where we wish we were and, you know, wish for more. And that's, that's all great. That's all great. You know, like nothing's wrong with like wanting to be you know somewhere else or wanting to grow or wanting to excel in life nothing's really wrong with that but we have to put it into perspective of okay i know i want to be there but am i doing what i need to do at this level where i am what god has given me like am i doing that well first and i think that you know bringing it back to the basics of you know what's happening currently in your life and taking almost like a mental inventory of you know <laughs> what's going on in your life and honestly what you can also be grateful for in your life is important so i'm gonna put this lash on y'all because lashes are hard to put on and talk so i'm gonna be right back with some more motivation inspiration and chat again so another thing that I wanted to say was that sometimes 
we think too little of God by comparing ourselves to another person. You know, we're sitting there and we're saying, oh God, I want to be just like them. And it's like, no, God has given you things. God has equipped you with things. God has possessed you with things that are far bigger than the person you're comparing yourself could do. So instead of comparing yourself to a human, compare yourself to who God has called you to be. You know, God, who have you called me to be for others? Lord, who do you want me to be for others? Father, give me the wisdom to, you know, do all the things that you've called me to do. Help me, equip me, you know, give me a heart that doesn't seek to compare or envy or want to covet what others have. Give me a heart that is content with my portion and finds joy in what I'm doing. That probably is a really good prayer and I'm probably gonna be praying that more often. But, you know, I think it's so important that we are also doing our duty of praying those big prayers like, God, I'm believing for this in my life. God, I'm believing for that in my life. God, I'm believing for this breakthrough. God, I'm believing for this move, this shift, this change in my life and not just gleaning on others' lives and saying, oh my gosh, like their life is so perfect and mine is like not. And like, gosh, that is not what we're gonna be doing. We're not gonna be comparing and just moping around. This is not what the C Squad, the Crystal Farm, the, you know, all of the names that I'm trying to name my squad people. Um, that's not what we're gonna do, okay? We're gonna get on our butts we're gonna get off of our butts, okay? And we're gonna get to work. We're gonna work on our craft diligently as unto the Lord, and we're going to be content. We're going to bless others who are succeeding. We are going to be happy for others who are succeeding. We're going to support others who are succeeding, okay? I mean, obviously, you're not gonna support everyone that succeeds because you might not you know, agree or align with whatever they're doing, but we're gonna be happy for them nonetheless, and we're going to believe that what God has for us is for us, okay? If it ain't for you, it ain't for you. You can't force God's hand and stuff, you know? You just can't, especially as a child of God. I figure that, you know, you know, even if you're like griping and like, God, give me this and give me what I want. <sighs> it just doesn't work like that. I may or may not know from experience. You can't force God's hand and make him do what you want him to do for you. It's just not just not gonna work okay it's just not just don't even don't even try it so I'm gonna put on my lipstick because obviously I can't talk and lipstick so BRB Um, beckity, beckity, beck, beck, beck. So in closing, before I put my wig on, I just wanted to say that, y'all, what God has for you is for you, truly. And he treasures you. I don't think, you know, people would want us gleaning from others' lives and wanting to be like them when he's tailored us and created us fearfully and wonderfully in his image. Like, we are ambassadors of Christ on earth. So we embody the the elements of Jesus so let us walk out in that power and authority today and not waste it comparing ourselves to others and moping and feeling discouraged but let us get on our feet and take charge 
um, towards what God has called us to and let us hone in on the crafts that God has given us and grow in them and suck so I hope this video encouraged you. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up here and put this wig on my head If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up comment below if this video was helpful and you want more like this and Make sure you subscribe if you aren't already. I will see you guys in my next video I totally forgot to put some bottom eyeliner on just one second, please. Oh No, this lash is not glued on it tried to deceive me Get on there, goodness. Oh my gosh, you too? Okay. I think that's okay. <sighs> well, I'm gonna go ahead and put that wig on and I'll talk to you guys later. So let's go ahead and put this bad boy on. So I completely forgot to spray some, you know, setting spray. So I'm just gonna spray it below my face. Ah! Woo, okay, we're just gonna hope that works. But um, thank you guys once again for watching and I'll see you guys in future videos. Bye!